Good morning. Um, yeah, I know. I, I should be wearing the um, the carbonator one, shouldn't I? Really? <laughs> no. Um, I'm supporting the, these guys at FWG all the way, uh, like I've said before. Uh, I was kind of thinking about it last night and uh, it, what a mammoth task they've got ahead of them with this one. Uh, it's the logistics. It's not just the finances. It's the whole thing. The logistics of putting that together, what they're trying to do, uh, just with the road trip itself, uh, for one, and then with the batteries, you know, setting the car up, it's it, it, the whole thing, and, and the finances, it's, it's a mammoth task, so I wish you guys at FWG, if you're watching, uh, all the best, as ever. Um, but uh, on with today. Um, I wanted to make some graphene oxide today because I'm, I'm getting low and uh, something sprang to mind um, which was uh, a video I saw on YouTube uh, a while back and there's, there's one or two videos about this uh, I'll get to the point in a minute um, yeah making graphene oxide now we use sulfuric acid uh, potassium permanganate and stuff like that don't we uh, you've all seen the RMS videos uh, I've made um, graphene oxide with all of those methods that Robert's done or showed us um, the one I prefer is uh, the revised Hummers one with the um, sulfuric acid and uh, phosphoric acid. Uh, a much safer reaction I think. Um, so when you see Robert doing these videos on uh, making graphene oxide um, and you see all of the chemical reactions it can get quite violent and it's it, Robert actually describes it as being quite reactive and quite violent which can go wrong completely wrong uh, and having tested something that I tested today uh, from seeing this video on YouTube uh, yeah it's quite right because um, what you're actually making in that reaction is manganese heptoxide now you're formulating a really strong oxidizer an extremely strong oxidizer and um, this, what I'm about to talk about, was, uh, was first described in 1860, I think it was, something like that. Uh, and what I wanted to do was just kind of show you how wrong this can really go uh, under certain conditions. So what I'm going to do without further ado... Um, one thing to remember with this, <coughs> throughout this uh, reaction, is that uh, what remains is a, a plus 7 oxidation state throughout. So, if you look at the chemistry of it, and you know, if you look it up uh, on Wikipedia, uh, or Google Scholar, and have a little look at it, and look at the reaction, you'll see what I mean. So, what I'm going to do is move the camera. Um, and just do a little demonstration um, and show you what can go wrong. As you can see, we're underneath my fume hood, which is where the microwave is. Um, so what we need for this reaction to take place, as we use with, um, you know, when we're making the graphene oxide, uh, one component is potassium permanganate. And the other component is sulfuric acid. Now, to follow a tradition, there's nothing like preparation, is there? What I'm going to do, I've already got some eyewear on, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is put some of these on. 
because I'm messing with sulfuric acid, aren't, aren't I? Um, now, there we go. And there, we've got some sulfuric acid. Concentrated sulfuric acid. And there, we've got a couple of bits of organic material. Now, the one thing we can safely say, when I put that sulfuric on there, is that just like when we're making the graphene oxide it will turn green and as described by Robert that's its most uh, volatile state and it's quite right now one of the reasons that I'm showing you this is because if you do um, make some graphene oxide by whichever method that uh, you know you you've seen on uh, Robert's channel um, if there's anything else uh, that can that can be within that mixture like an organic material um, let's say if uh, if your beaker isn't clean or any, it, it could be anything you're going to get a, a further reaction that you don't want or if you were to drop anything else in there you're going to get a further reaction that you just don't want. So what I'm going to do, take a pipette and I'm going to put some sulfuric acid on the permanganate. Now that's reacting straight away now, you can see that there's heat, there's all sorts being generated there. Um, so I'll just wait for that to go green. What I'll do, Just show you that. Okay. There it is, bubbling away. And it's definitely turning green. So, as I say, I've got some organic materials there. Now this is a piece of tissue. Okay. Now it does make you jump. There's no two ways about that. That was just a piece of tissue. This is a piece of um, cotton wool basically. And that is a piece of bread. Okay, so there's your bread. Now, we've got loads of uh, purple smoke coming off that, and uh, that's your permanganate reacting further. Um, now I don't know what paper will do because I've not tried it. Right, well, we've almost used up uh, all of the reaction there now, but um, this was just to show you what can go wrong. Well, this is um, a few minutes later, and I don't think that uh, this thing has finished reacting yet. Still got uh, stuff going on in there. You can see the purple smoke. Hopefully, so I'll put that back under 
fume hood. So yeah. Interesting. So that's just another piece of uh, cotton wool, just to make sure that uh, we're not going to react anymore. Now one thing I'm definitely not trying to do here is entice anyone into trying that at home. Uh, or anywhere else for that matter. Unless of course you were in the wilderness uh, and you needed to light a fire and you just happened to have some highly concentrated sulfuric acid and some potassium permanganate. Uh, although there are other videos on YouTube uh, where they show people lighting fires out in the wilderness with potassium permanganate. I'm not going to go into all that today because I don't want to. But it was purely um, as a demonstration, uh, as it cropped up in my head, because, like I said today, I'm going to make some graphene oxide. And um, for quite a while I was making graphene oxide, uh, aware of what Robert had told us. Um, but until I saw that video, I didn't really know or understand just how volatile it can be. I just didn't get it, you know, until I saw that video. So I think really it's a good job that I did see that video um, because it opened my eyes and, and this should open anyone's eyes. Uh, you know, as, as to just what you're dealing with when, you make, when, you, when you're making the, up these compounds, what you're actually dealing with. So food for thought and furthermore talking about things that crop up in your mind from time to time I've just remembered something else which was uh, in one of my older videos uh, I actually talked about uh, some activated carbon and I had an idea uh, which was to try and dope the activated carbon with graphene oxide in that reaction. So what I did was um, I got the reaction going initially with the graphite um, and then I added some activated carbon. Now I think I did it the wrong way around. I should have mixed the activated carbon with the graphite but I didn't. And when I added the activated carbon now there's enough of a reaction going on anyway, you know, with the graphite. So <laughs> you've got that to contend with anyway. Uh, and you don't need the reaction to go wrong. But I then added some activated carbon and I had the devil's own job to uh, stop this thing reacting even further. I can assure you, I really did. So. Uh, that one cropped up as well in my mind, so um, <laughs> if you're going to add stuff to this, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be adding organic materials, do you? So, um, I know, uh, you know, the activated carbon is a carbon, so, uh, and yes, it did turn out really well. Um, the carbon itself was pretty good. Uh, and I do intend to try that again. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, do it on a smaller scale. Instead of adding, you know, uh, three grams of um, graphite and the usual, how, however many grams, 15 grams of p uh, potassium permanganate and stuff like that, I'm going to just bring it down a notch or a couple of notches and just do a tiny amount first. Uh, which is easier to deal with if you get a bad reaction, isn't it? So, um, 
I'm going to be trying a couple of things uh, within that reaction and I'm going to be trying some sugar carbon as well um, as well as the uh, the coconut variety activated carbon so I just thought I'd throw that little bit in as well um, careful is the word isn't it great care so that's it